Brands. So um, in this opportunity, I would like to share about ESG in tourism, uh, directions for the future. So uh, we are going to talk a lot about the uh, future directions for future studies. Um, next, let's have a look on the slides. Uh, yes, yeah, so I have been uh, you know, introduced well, so I'm going to just skip this part. Thank you very much. So these are some of the things that we will be discussed today. So uh, from the background, why do we need to care about uh, ESG? Why understanding ESG is important? And also uh, what about ESG in tourism? And then also the research aim that will be incorporated in this presentation slides. And uh, bibliometric analysis process as part of the methodology uh, that I carried on in this uh, research and also some findings and discussion, as well as the conclusion and directions for future studies. Next, please. Okay, so this is actually the background. Uh, why ESG and why should we care about understanding ESG? I think everyone knows nowadays that ESG has become a popular term in recent days. So uh, to give you a briefly, you know, um, understanding about that. So ESG, of course, incorporates the environmental principle that focuses on the impacts on the natural environment. That includes also the climate change, uh, the carbon em emissions, the resources depletion and pollution, um, taking biodiversity and also conservation into account and so on. And on the social principle, it focuses on how we manage our relationship with the society. That also includes the safety and health, human, uh, human rights, the community relations and so on. On the government uh, governance principle, um, it focuses on the leadership, organization leaderships, and also uh, anything really regarding the uh, companies and also corporations, uh, such as the executive compensation, let's say uh, the internal uh, internal control, that also includes the um, corporate governance, business ethics and compliance, and also the transparency and disclosures. So um, to sum up, there is a growing pressure on business to prioritize people and the planet alongside profits, uh, which has led to a rise in academic interest in ESG as a research area. So this is also what we are doing now in this conference. We are talking about ESG because uh, this is uh, you know, a very interesting uh, topics that we are covering uh, in this recent days. So now the next question would be, um, what about ESG in tourism research? Okay, next please. So um, why should we care about understanding ESG in tourism? Um, the expensive nature of ESG concept with um, which encompasses a broad range of sustainability and also ethical considerations, making it crucial in tourism for uh, promoting responsible practices, um, enhancing community benefits, and also ensuring long-term environmental uh, preservation. However, it is also argued that um, there is still an unclear definition of ESG in tourism. Um, meanwhile, of course, it is important for tourism research as it underscores the need uh, for uh, precise frameworks to guide sustainable and also ethical practices within the industry. And then uh, to understand ESG scopes in tourism, um, how one topic in tourism research will relate and also connect with other topics that incorporate ESG principles. So this is actually something that we are going to discuss further in this, this uh, uh, discussion also presentation. So um, by understanding ESG and tourism, of course, this is vital for outlining directions for future research um, as it helps identify key sustainability challenges and also opportunities um, and also by guiding the development of um, effective policies and practices that promote ethical and also environmentally responsible tourism. Uh, so next please. So therefore this research aims to explain how um, ESG principles are interconnected with various tourism research topics in the existing literature using bibliometric analysis. I'm going to explain more about bibliometric analysis in this next slide, please. Okay, 
So in terms of methodology, I'm using Infometrics approach. Uh, so Infometric is actually the broader field that studies the quantitative aspect of information. So there are scientometrics, cybermetrics, uh, altmetrics, webometrics, um, which are, you know, um, studying about the quantitative aspect of information uh, throughout the internet and other um, platform as well. But in this context, um, I will be only using bibliometric analysis, which is dealing uh, primarily with the quantitative analysis of bibliometric, uh, uh, sorry, bibliographic data. So it involves the study of articles um, and other publications, which focus on the citation counts um, authorship patterns and also publication trends. And in this presentation, in this research, I'm using references from Scopus uh, index journals. Okay, so I'm using uh, scopus.com as the uh, reference for my database. Okay, uh, let me show you the, you know, the steps um, in conducting this bibliometric analysis. Next, please. Okay, so there are uh, yeah, four main steps in conducting this bibliometric analysis. Uh, the first step would be, you know, um, making the search criteria. So I am only focusing on journal articles and I'm putting keywords that is uh, that are representing ESG, which is environmental, social governance, and also tourism as the main aspect that I want to cover in this area. And then on the second step, I'm using scopus.com, which is the database that I'm using, uh, which is actually my limitation, uh, because if you want to cover more you know, comprehensive understanding about uh, the interconnections between uh, each topic, um, probably it's fine, it's, it's worthwhile to also consider Web of Science. But uh, I have some limitations on that. Um, I have no access, so I'm just focusing on scopus.com, which I would say that uh, I found a very interesting findings. Um, on scopus.com, I only found, so on the step three, as you can see on the screen, um, there are only 26 journal articles. So um, it's quite interesting uh, from my side because I thought um, in scopus.com, there would be, you know, 100 more or even thousand or you know um, uh, hundred thousand uh, articles in scopus.com that are covering ESG with tourism but apparently only 26 and uh, it covers 10 years okay so 2014 until 2024 so this is what makes it interesting so in order to visualize the findings from um, the uh, scopus.com I'm using um, Voss Viewer as the software. So uh, this is the software to visualize the bibliometric analysis. And the last step would be the presentation of result, which is today. Okay, please, next. So this is uh, the discussion about the findings. So let me just go straight on the next slide, please. Okay, so as you can see here, this is the scopus.com page. So I'm putting the... Um, keywords there, so I'm searching the documents related to environmental, social, and governments and uh, tourism, and only 26 documents found, so which is very interesting um, findings, I would say, because again, I thought it would be something that uh, cover a lot more than this, uh, and so from all of these uh, findings, all of the, the, the documents that I found uh, on this page, I um, analyze through the bus viewer. Next, please. And so, yes, please, next. And so this is actually the result of the Voss Viewer uh, visualization as the analysis for the bibliometrics uh, that is being represented on the last slide. So uh, this is uh, this Voss Viewer visualization representing the relationships between ESG and tourism research topics. And it is found that most research is talking about CSR as it become uh, the central node in this figure. As you can see here, CSR is on the purple cluster. Yeah, so um, mostly uh, it is. it can be also say that most of the researchers talking about CSR in terms of ESG and, and how it is connected to the tourism uh, sectors. 
So uh, to make it more detailed, as you can see here, environmental is on the red cluster. So this cluster emphasizes the environmental aspects, uh, which reflecting the integration of sustainability and also environmental concern, uh, which are mostly found in CSR studies and nodes like um, climate change, air quality um, uh, are relatively recent, suggesting actually suggesting growing interest in that topics. Um, the second topic would be about government, uh, the governance, sorry, on the light blue cluster. As you can see here, this is the cluster that highlights the governance dimensions. So the presence of terms like default risk and stock volatility indicates a focus on the financial implications on the governance practices. And ESG, so some, uh, you know, research are using ESG in terms of, you know, the um, complete principle of environmental, social, and uh, governance. So they are referring to this term. So this cluster connects topics with broader ESG considerations with the node environmental uh, sustainability and also pro uh, environmental behavior suggests emerging themes within the ESG uh, framework. And then if you have a look on the purple cluster, which is on the financial performance, it reflects uh, research into the financial impacts of CSR and ESG factors. Um, and as you can see also, the bibliometric uh, indicates a methodological focus on analyzing the literature. And uh, here is where tourism um, works in this uh, visualization. So if you have a look on the dark blue cluster, uh, on the top side, uh, here is the tourism economics. So uh, this cluster represents a very niche area, I would say, specifically within the tourism sectors. So it connects economic analysis and also political factors with the CSR. Uh, the last one would be the yellow cluster. If you have a look on this um, slide, uh, this node represent recent um, research trends, I would say, as it is indicated by the yellow color. So these topics are uh, like coworker incivility and also pro-environmental behavior and so on. Um, here is uh, the newest areas on the context and CSR and ESG. So I would uh, explain each cluster later on on the next few slides. Uh, but before going on in detail, let me uh, show you this, the next slide, please. So here, this is the result of those viewer visualization indicating the publication use. So in this voice viewer uh, bibliometric analysis visualization, it represents an updated view of the interconnectedness um, of the research topics related to ESG. So each node represents a keyword and research topics, uh, as I just uh, explained in the last slide. But if you have a look um, on the color, so the older research are represented by darker blue nodes. As you can see here, uh, some topics that are related to the older research are talking about economic analysis and also politics, which have been part of the discourses for a long time. But on the recent, more recent research, um, I would say that the 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 uh, research are predominantly on talking on the new topics like uh, pro environmental behavior, the coworker invisibility, and also show that where current and also future research might be heading. So um, yeah, to get more detail on that, uh, let's have a look on the next slide, please. Okay, so this is a more detailed view of the interconnectedness of research using ESG as a term and clustering of various keywords and also research themes, uh, including also the methodology, which is the bibliometric analysis. Um, so as you can see here, the most prominent node is ESG on green uh, color, which is indicating that uh, this is the central theme of the analysis. And the cluster that revolves around ESG and also includes keywords like environmental, um, environmental sustainability, uh, COR theory, or uh, conservation on resources theories as well as coworker invisibility and pre, uh, pro-environmental behavior. So these are themes that are connected 
change the environment and also social aspect of ESG, focusing on sustainability, workplace behavior, and also resource management. Um, so meanwhile, on the center around uh, financial performance, uh, here this cluster in terms uh, includes the terms like bibliometric and also ESG factors, which means that uh, this is focusing on how ESG factors influence financial outcomes and also the use of uh, bibliometric methods to analyze these relationships and also the governance, uh, which also includes the bibliometric analysis as well as the CSR, which is uh, linking the governance and also the financial performance. And all of the uh, visualizations also reveals that ESG research is multifaceted. So it's an interdisciplinary um, research as well, which covers environmental sustainability, fi finance uh, performance, corporate governance, um, which also incorporate the prominence of bibliometric analysis as the clusters that suggest um, a significant reliance on quantitative methods to map the research landscape trends and also the interconnections which uh, within the ESG literature. On the next slide, please. Uh, so this is a comprehensive overview of research themes related to environmental on the left and also um, the social on the right and their connections between uh, with the tourism economics firm ownerships, CSR, and governance. So both visualizations are um, referring to the environmental and social, which uh, show significant nodes with numerous uh, subtopics, including air quality, public transport, and climate change. And the governance itself are connected with the um, CSR and also default risk, stock vol volatility, and also capital. And if you are gain, going deeper to the detail, uh, the connection and the sub themes of each. It links to the sub themes uh, such as air quality, public transport, the climate change and so on. And more further into the tourism aspect, as you can see here, the tourism economics are linked with the environmental and also social. However, it shows a very niche research area, which is that's why I would say that this is very interesting in terms of how we see these findings. Next, please. Okay, so this is a comprehensive overview of research themes related to CSR as a central node that connects the governance, environment, uh, environmental, tourism economics, and financial performance. So this illustrates the interconnectedness. Uh, as you can see here, CSR is the central theme shown as the largest and also most connected node uh, and it links to multiple other topics, highlighting its uh, importance and also widespread uh, research interest. So um, as you can see in terms of this uh, analysis, CSR is a highly um, interconnected research area, which significantly link to environmental issues, um, governance practices, uh, ESG factors, and financial performance. And this clustering also highlights how different aspects of CSR are studied in conjunction with each other and uh, reflecting its uh, multifaceted or multidisciplinary nature and also broad impact across uh, various domains. Okay, next, please. Next, please. Now, what about tourism? So this is actually something that uh, really make me wonder most because what I see is mostly about CSR, uh, the financial performance and so on. So what about tourism? So in this case, I can see that um, tourism economics becoming is the main topic in the tourism literature. Uh, but uh, here, the interdisciplinary between the tourism, um, it is highlighted that uh, there are links between tourism economics, environmental studies, and also corporate uh, governance. Um, so here also you can see that uh, the linkage between uh, these topics uh, suggests robust, robust research on economic impacts on environmental issues or vice versa, which is related to the uh, economic impacts on tourism. So uh, I would also say that uh, on this research focus areas, 
uh, so connections such as tourism economics and also corporate social responsibility indicate focal point of research, likely uh, serving as a fundamental elements in related studies. Okay, next please. So in conclusion, um, I would say that ESG in tourism remains an um, under research area. So within this existing body of work, uh, you can see that corporate social responsibility or CSR stands out as the central theme and receiving the most uh, attention from researcher. However, there are significant gaps uh, in terms of the present opportunities uh, uh, I mean, uh, significant gaps in terms of the existing literature, and it represents the opportunities uh, for future explorations. And um, that also includes a range of other related topics of research and the adoption of diverse um, methodological approaches to deepen our understanding on ESG in the tourism sector. Next, please. So here are uh, some future research directions based on the bibliometric analysis that I just conducted. So I would say that as the tourism industry evolves, um, several emerging topics and also trends are shaping the future of research. So uh, sustainable tourism practices, ecotourism, uh, community-based tourism, responsible tourist behavior, and also cultural heritage preservation might offer rich opportunities for investigation aiming to enhance the industry's sustainability and also positive impact. Um, as well as the ESG and tourism framework, I would say uh, in this realm of uh, frameworks, future research should focus on integrating these aspects into tourism management and strategy. Um, additionally, perhaps also aligning these efforts with the UN um, Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs, uh, which can provide also a comprehensive approach to achieving sustainability in tourism. And exploring interdisciplinary themes or study areas can also further enrich the tourism research. I would say that perhaps like public health um, information technology, artificial intelligence, and also digital literacy, urban planning, the green and blue economy, um, as well as the renewable energy are all relevant fields that intersect with the tourism. So perhaps investigating these connections can lead to innovative solution and also practices. The last one is would be examining the impact of ESG principles on tourism business practices in is probably another crucial direction for future research. So the key areas include tourist satisfaction, loyalty and repeat visitation, destination branding, cost benefit analysis, um, also the long-term profitability and value chain sustainability. So understanding all of these impacts can help businesses to adapt more sustainability and also profitable practices. So those are some examples of uh, future research directions uh, that you can explore uh, in near future. And in terms of the methodology, perhaps you also want to cover um, other branches of infometrics, as well as um, the elicitation methods, quantitative or qualitative um, can enhance the research quality and also outcomes. So uh, these approaches, I would say that can also provide new insights and data uh, facilitating more uh, most robust and also comprehensive studies in tourism research. Okay, uh, next please. I think that was my last slide. So thank you very much uh, for your attention. So if you have questions, please let me know and I will try to answer your uh, questions. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Imla, for such a really fruitful speech in this morning regarding ESG, which actually after um, hearing your speech this morning, we realized that ESG have a really strong relation with the CSR, uh, which sound that uh, from many current studies and the prior studies too, um, CSR become the uh, main focal point in this topic. So, um, we realized too that the tourism in ESG is a crucial research area. 
because it addresses the industry wide ranging impacts on many aspects uh, such as the environment, economics, and societies, as you mentioned earlier. All right, for uh, all the participants, um, for you that have a question for Dr. Imla related to the ESG, especially in the tourism topic, please drop your question in the question box so we can discuss it in this moment. All right, while waiting for the question, um, I want to be the first one that gives the question to our invited keynote speaker. Because, yes, please, please. Because uh, after hearing your presentation, I feel a little bit curious, um, especially uh, by relating to the prior one with the Dr. Saddam. Apparently, he mentioned that uh, ESG is important, but not everyone implemented, implemented this one, especially the SME. Mm. Uh, government has a really strong um, impact by providing policy and etc. So my question is, we know that the tourism sectors, especially in Indonesia, is dominated mostly by the SME. Many people coming from SME. So uh, from your point of view, Dr. Imla, what role does stakeholder engagement can play in developing and implementing effective ESG strategies in this tourism se sector? Thank you, Mbak Widyo Ratno, for the question. I would say that uh, that was a very interesting question. That was actually also one of my uh, personal questions. So what is the main stockholder that are uh, responsible in this case? So uh, based on my uh, limited understanding as well as um, the my experience in dealing with tourism industries in Indonesia, I talk uh, to ministries, especially in the Ministry of Tourism and also the um, creative economy, as well as some practitioners in terms of the tourism sectors. So what I found is, uh, I think the main key uh, stakeholder that should uh, carry on this very difficult responsibility is actually the government. So we need the government as the, um, you know, that, that support, um, especially SMEs, to be also having a, a uh, deep in depth in understanding about the importance of uh, the importance of ESG because it is not only for today. Okay, so the impact of ESG is probably cannot be seen in recent days, in present times, but it will be very impacting um, the um, the environmental, social, and also the governance of the future, especially for our um, grandchildren. Let's say. So this is something that needs, um, you know, understanding, and we need to incorporate many stakeholders, not only government, but uh, if you want to put it in more theoretical aspects, there is also academics that are uh, taking a lot of responsibilities in, you know, maintaining the connections between all of the topics and also covering uh, the topics in terms of the ESG into research and incorporating it into their curriculum and um, teaching it to their students. And of course, they need their support, the support from the government. So not only that, so the government, the academics, we also need the participation from the business side. So of course, uh, if in the context of AS, uh, SMEs, this is quite a challenge because what they would um, take uh, into account is mostly about profits or money. They, they are more money oriented, but this is where uh, our res responsibility can cover. We need to make them, convince them that it's not only about money, it's also about the future, how to make us, um, our business sustain. So if you are only talking about money, referring to how you can get profits, it would be sustained in a very uh, short duration of time. I would say if you want to make your business stable and also sustain in the long run, you need to cover um, other than profits, but also um, you know, um, considering the impact for the future um, environment and also the society. So. Uh, from all of the stakeholders, there are government, uh, the academics, the business, the media that also play part in, uh, you know, spreading the informations, as well as the community, I would say. So the community in the, um, in the as a local community or the local residents, they would also need to 
uh, cooperate with the government. Um, yeah, well, with the all of the uh, implementations of ESG in their business. But the main part would be on the government side, I would say. So still it's on the government side and us as the academics, we can help them, you know, in um, maintaining our understanding in this and also, you know, developing and enhancing uh, the concept of ESG and uh, implementing it on the business practices, especially for ES, uh, SMEs. That's my two cents. Hope I answer your questions. Answer it fully. Like I can get that um, the government is important. They playing essential card, but the synergy for all aspects around this tourism industry is really help to um, enhance and encourage the actor in the tourism itself. Like even the educators, um, the researcher itself that doing uh, the research and also the education makers, the policy makers that make uh, the understanding of ESG since the primary education makes all the children understand about it, will make the development about this one. Yes. All that's right. True. That's true. Okay. A very insightful one, but we will we will continue to the first question that appeared from our participants is coming from Mr. Arif Abdillah. He asked, what is the first step to do to implement ESG in tourism sector, particularly in Indonesia? Hmm. That's a very interesting uh, question. Yeah. Uh, so based on my understanding regarding this tourism sector, we are uh, actually uh, already doing that, yeah, but we are heading in a more advanced and more sophisticated uh, practices in terms of ESG in our tourism uh, industry in Indonesia. So uh, if you are referring to the tourism in Indonesia, I would say this is also pretty a challenge uh, because we are still, our government are still uh, trying to emphasize the number of visitors from outside the country. So the international visitors uh, might be uh, one of the most, um, what do you call it, uh, aspect that they are trying to cover on their uh, strategy. So here is actually the challenge that we need to overcome. So because in some part of our uh, country, for example, in Indonesia, we have we have a lot of you know cultural uh, richness. We have a lot of beautiful sceneries. If you are not Understanding the impact of ESG, it's not. Um, it will be um, impacting to the uh, how, how you how you manage to deal with the number of visitors. So, for example, uh, Raja Ampat. Yeah, Raja Ampat is. Um, yeah, hopefully you know that this is a very beautiful destination in Papua. So, uh, just imagine if there are numbers. Um, massive numbers of people coming from uh, other areas of Indonesia domestically and also from other countries that are you know uh, visiting that area can you imagine how big how massive the um the the trash the rubbish the you know um on the area okay so one of the things that needs to be uh, understood by the tourist that is visiting the destination is to be responsible. So to be responsible as a tourist, meaning that they need to understand the local culture of the area. They need to understand what are the local culture of Papua, the, um, you know, the customs, the norms of Papua people. And they also need to understand about how they manage to also preserve uh, preserve the environment uh, in the area by only not, you know, um, for example, the, the 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 simple thing that we can use uh, we can do as a as a as a tourist is not littering. So if you have uh, a trash or something you just put it on your bag in in instead of you know uh throwing it on the on your environment because it's going to be uh littering the your surroundings so this is a very simple attitude and simple gesture that you need to understand as a responsible tourist so uh what we are doing uh, in terms of the strategies that the the governments are implementing of course uh it's a uh, 
quite a contradiction. We want to welcome a big number of visitors, but at the same time, we also want to preserve our uh, environment. So what do we, what can we do is actually maintaining, under, making uh, the uh, tourist that is visiting us understands about the impact of the uh, for the environment and making them um, more understood about, uh, no, making them understand about uh, how to be a responsible tourist. And uh, in terms of how we deal with the business uh, players in the area, we um, what I know from the government side is they are making some kind of certification or uh, standards or um, what do you call it as the operating procedure system. So they make up certifications for each business player, especially in the hospitality sectors. They need to make uh, their business um, eco-friendly, uh, also, um, you know, certifying themselves, uh, going to the seminars of ESG that is uh, being um, introduced or helped by the government. So things like that, so that the business players are also um, taking this aspect into account. And on the um, you know visitor side, we are responsible and we know how to um, behave in the environment. And so on the government side, of course, they need to create some kind of regu regulations or policies for those who are visiting. And um, we, they also need to manage the tourism marketing side. So tourism marketing doesn't necessarily mean that we are only promoting our destinations, but also um, maintaining what we have. Okay, so preserving what we have. So to deal with that, of course, they need to create some kind of regulations and also policies that uh, can help the destinations uh, to preserve their um, ESG concept on that uh, destinations. I hope I, 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 I uh, answer your question. I forgot the name of the participant who asked, uh, is it? Mr. Is it Arif Abdullah. Abdullah. Yeah. I hope I answer your question, uh, Pa Arif. Yes, it seems that you already Fully. answering. All right, clear, doctor. Yes, what I can get from here that maybe uh, get from by the all the participants in here is the first step for every actors is different to get the ESG itself. The first step it will be difficult to start maybe, but it's important because we can't get nowhere if you are not starting from yeah. the first step. All right, we're heading that way. We're heading that way. Hopefully. All right. <laughs> All right, so the next question coming from Mr. Amro Al Sehari. It seems that the question is related to your methodology. Mm -hmm. What is the minimum paper should be included in bibliometric analysis? Okay, thank you very much for the question. That was also a very good question. So, uh, in terms of bibliometric analysis, um, yes, this is quite, um, I would say, a tricky uh, methodology because in order to create some kind of framework of the interconnectedness between one topic to another. Of course, we need um, yeah, a bunch of data sets. So if it is less than just 10, I would say it wouldn't really work. But although it is just less than 10 um, articles, let's say, it still can give us some insights about the interconnectedness between each topic. But if you see that there are only few articles this is already an insight already. So it means that the um, research that are covering that topics or research area are still uh, low. So uh, this is actually an opportunity for you to explore more on that area of research, which also indicating the gaps that you can you know, um, explore more and you can fill that, that gaps uh, on your side. If you are a researcher, you can fill that gap on your side and also creating some you know, research and conducting research in terms of that um, research area, and then connecting it with the other areas that might be relevant to that topics so that you can cover all of the um, uh, interconnections between the topics. So I would say that um, if it's only one 
paper, it wouldn't mean too much. Uh, but although you can put uh, only one articles, at least you can get the idea about the interconnections from one topic to another on that specific uh, paper. But um, maybe I would uh, recommend to have more than that. Yeah. So uh, the more, the merrier, I would say. So it's easy to see the interconnectedness. But at some point, also, you might see that the room for improvement or the room for exploration is very difficult because people are talking in the same areas. So probably uh, you can get the idea about the other topics instead. Hope I answer your question. All right, this is such a really detailed answer because I realized that many researchers maybe when they want to do literature review studies or bibliometric, they stop because the topic is limited and the uh, source of the research is limited to it, so they stop. And the answer that's given by Dr. Ilma, I hope that can answer all the questions for the researcher that want to do the bibliometric analysis. All right, uh, moving on. Maybe this one is the last question for the session. It's coming from our session chair. Uh, Dr. Naziatul Azia Motazi. Hi, Doctor. I'm Naziatul from Malaysia. How can you say about the ESG pattern in Indonesia, such as the government attention, industry player willingness, and society awareness and knowledge to the particular issue? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, may I ask you a bit about your question? Is it um, just specifically related to the tourism uh, sector, or um, it can be for other sectors as well? It can be general. Oh, it can be general. Okay, it can be general. Um, so based on um, the research that I just conducted and I just uh, discussed in this pr uh, presentation or in this conference, actually, I can see that um, most of the researchers are talking about CSR, yeah, but uh, that would be in general, not only talking about Indonesia, this is about the global areas of research. But in the Indonesia itself, I would say on the government uh, attentions, particularly is on the, um, uh, on the nowadays they are talking about the uh, car carbon reduction, uh, redu reduction and also the, the um, renewable energy. So they are mostly talking about energy styles. Uh, that's why nowadays um, everything are related to their policies and regulation in terms of the um, ec electric uh, vehicles, let's say. Uh, but I would say um, mostly if you are trying to cover the social aspect of it, um, now uh, from my limited understanding is uh, about how they are trying to empower uh, the uh, society. So society empowerment, society participations in their um, regulations makings are also part of their considerations. So uh, I would say that especially in Indonesia, they are getting more um, considerate in terms of understanding the societies or communities uh, perspectives. So every time they are trying to make um, making decisions in terms of policies or regulations, they are, you know, inviting uh, key persons from the communities for the FGDs and so on, so that they can get some, um, you know, point of view and also insights from them. And um, well, what I can say is probably mostly about the tourism because I'm not covering, you know, uh, the other areas of that. Uh, I will, I, I apologize. So I would be more, um, I would say that probably more uh, focus on the tourism aspect because I'm also dealing with that on the uh, ministries. So that's what they are doing. Uh, they are also uh, trying to manage the um, renewable energies and also how to make impacts on the environment through the carbon uh, reductions. Um, also by empowering the social um, communities in the local areas and so on. I think 
uh, that's some my two cents in terms of your uh, questions. I hope I answer your questions, Ibu Nazia to Azia. Uh, yes, already answering it seems from her answer in the chat box. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much for your questions, everyone. I hope, yes, uh, looking forward to your collaboration on this topic. Yes, yes, um, I'm very happy to have a further collaborations with all of you, all the participants in this conference. Uh, please let me know. I already put my emails on the slides. Uh, if you want to have my slides, perhaps you can ask the uh, committees. So of course, I'm very happy for future collaborations. Hopefully we can make it together. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Imla, for such a really inspired and also insightful um, session and sharing regarding the ESG and tourism, and also uh, for answering all of the curious questions that appear in the chat box. So uh, because of the time constraint, we're so sorry because we have to stop the Q&A session in this moment. However, for all the participants, don't worry, because I believe there's many curious questions that appear from you you can still type your question in the Zoom chat box and the committee will help to um, inform the question to Dr. Ilma. So you still have to uh, get the answer that's given by Dr. Ilma through our research community global network. So don't worry about that. We will inform Dr. Ilma if there's another question that appears from the participants. All right. So another um, information that I want to share is regarding the PowerPoint that given by our keynote speakers, both from Dr. Saddam and also Dr. Ilma. Don't worry because the committee will send the uh, material of the PowerPoint to all of the participants that already, um, already fill the registration fill link and also, uh, send, also joining the research global community network. So don't worry, you still can catch up with the materials that given by today's conference. All right, once again, thank you very much, Dr. Ilma Aulia Zaim for the insightful speech today. Thank you. As the recognition and appreciation from the 8 SBEM, we would like to give token of appreciation to have Dr. Ilma Aulia Zaim, PhD, assistant professor. Therefore,